What are their recent changes to the PL200 Microsoft Power Platform Functional Consultant exam? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. The PL200 builds on the skills that you would have learnt in the PL100 Microsoft Power Platform App Maker. So with this exam, you implement the design provided by and in collaboration with a solution architect. You implement integrations, you generate training documentation, you interact and effectively communicate with members of a team. And you can see that it focuses on Microsoft Dataverse, Power Apps, both Canvas and model driven apps, Power Automate Cloud Flows, so not the desktop flows, Power Pages, and Power Platform Environments. And you can see that Configure Microsoft Dataverse, create apps by using Power Apps, create and manage logic and process automation are equally weighted, and there is a lesser weight to manage environments. So what are the changes that have recently happened on January the 12th? Well, if we go up to the study guide, let's have a look at the old requirements and see what has been removed. Because you can see there are lots of changes. So first of all, we're looking at manage a data model. Removed are create new relationships or modify existing relationships. However, that sort of thing you should know from the PL100 exam. Create alternate keys for tables. So that's something that's very useful when you are programming in Power Platform. And so probably it's more suited to the PL400 exam. Scrolling down, manage sharing. So that's a minor thing that has been deleted, as has diagnose security issues. Now the create model driven apps has changed in respect to the fact that everything is now on the newer version of the app creator. So configure site maps, while well, site maps no longer are a thing in model driven apps. So that's gone. Identify when to use a Canvas app. So that's fairly basic. I would expect that more in the PL900 exam, the fundamentals exam. However, if we scroll down, so configure advanced logic has been removed from the business process flows. It's here in this latter part where there's been some major changes. So the entire section describe Microsoft Power Virtual Agents has gone. So the reason for this is Power Virtual Agents has now been renamed as Microsoft Copilot Studio. And as part of this, it's now being moved out of the Power Platform into the AI section. Additionally, import and visualize data by using Dataflow and Power BI has also gone, all except one topic, namely describe Power FX. But to be honest, writing and using Power FX functions and formulas is sort of thing that you'd be expected to know from the PL100 exam anyway. And then define an environment strategy. The describe interoperability with other services has been completely rewritten. So gone has any reference to Microsoft Teams or the on-premises data gateway. So let's have a look at the current requirements as of January the 12th, 2024, and see what has been added. Well, first of all, we have got Microsoft Entra ID, but that's just the new name for Microsoft Active Directory ID. It's just a rename. Embed a Canvas app in a model-driven app form is new to the PL200. However, it is required in the PL100 in any case. Going down to build Microsoft Power Pages. So it used to be that Power Pages, the website builder, was part of the Power Apps portal, and you would start it from there. You can still start it from there, but it moves you into the new Power Pages designer. And so any of the functionality that you had in the previous version, you now have to learn where it is in the new version. It's fairly similar, to be honest. However, the Describe Advanced Power Pages features does have some new additions. It has multi-step forms. So these are individual forms, which you can present to the user as a step one, step two, step three, and so on. Now, this has some good advantages when it comes to things like document management. So if you want to upload an attachment to a record, that record or row needs to be saved first because you need a saved row to upload your attachments and be related to that row. So if, for instance, you have got, say, an application to adopt a pet, that application needs to be saved 
and then you can upload your attachments and say they are to that particular row. So the multi-step form allows you to have the information. So like for instance, a pet application, it can then be saved and then a later step can allow you the document management functionality. So both document management and multi-step forms are new to the PL200. Going down to Power Automate, work with the Dataverse connector. So this is now explicit that you need to know about the Dataverse connector, even though it's sort of implied in the remainder of the topics. And then scrolling down, we have configure low code plugins. But to be honest, a lot of that is taken up by the rest of the topics, for instance, the modern commanding, for example. And then the final six topics are, well, I would say all new, except these first two, they have been in and out of the PL200 for some years now. So they are back in import and export Dataverse solutions and manage environments for development. Again, this is something that you will need to know at the PL100. And again, in the PL100, they've come in, they've come out, so they are in. So if you have gone through the PL100, you should already know how to do this and then configure email integration. So there are plenty of places where email is integrated, for instance, Power Automate or with a classic workflow. Configure Microsoft SharePoint integration. Well, you will need to know that for the document management in Power Pages. Describe options for document management. So it's not just the Power Pages, but also Power Automate and using the AI builder for the Canvas and model-driven apps to a limited extent and to Power Automate. And then work with Microsoft Word templates. This used to be in the PL100 along with work with Microsoft Excel templates. It's been out of the 100 for about a year and a half and is now in the PL200. So we've got about 10 or so new topics. Plus you need to know the latest Power Pages design as opposed to the older version, but gone is any reference to Microsoft Power Virtual Agents, to most of Power BI, to data flows, and to Microsoft Teams. So I think this brings a much tighter focus on what you are required to know in the PL200. Now, if you'd like any assistance with learning the topics in the PL200 or PL100, then I hope you will join me in our video courses. In the PL900, we have a look at the fundamentals. So basically, what can you do in the Power Platform? In the PL100, we look at how you can do it, how you can create Canvas apps, model-driven apps, Power Automate, Power Builder, and the AI Builder. And then in the PL200, we build on what you have learned. In the PL100, we don't start from complete scratch. You need to know the PL100 content for this. And then we have a look at the additional things such as classic workflows, power pages, and more. So if you're interested in any of our courses, then please go to idodata.com and then click at the top where it says Microsoft Power Platform. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then why not like it? And why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. There's a lot of new content coming to this YouTube channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.